I encourage everyone to take a moment and breathe and take a tea cheers with a Jiri tea. A Jiri tea recognizes the beauty in shared stories and shared opportunities. Ajiri sources award-winning tea from Kenya, employs women in the region to handcraft the labels, and sends 100% of the profits back to the region to support orphan education. Save 10% on your order of Kenyan teas and coffee with the code BEAUTIFULLYHUMAN at ajiritea.com. A-J-I-R-I-T.com. Tea mugs up! Hello, and welcome to the Beautifully Human podcast. I'm Nick Sheesby. In this podcast, I speak with beautiful humans from all around the world, sharing with you their incredible stories, revealing the power in every human story to spread love and humanity to a world that is in desperate need of it, to show that we can all connect in beautiful ways, no matter where we come from or what we look like. What you will find out is that we are all beautifully human. Let's all be beautifully human. All right. Welcome to another episode of the Beautifully Human podcast. Today, joining me all the way from New South Wales, Australia is Kaz Amos. And man, do we have an amazing conversation. It's so fun. I'm just going to say it has a lot of heart to it. Um, yeah, if you enjoy this podcast, follow on Spotify and on Instagram at the Beautifully Human Podcast. Rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. And most of all, enjoy this beautiful conversation. Um, well, cool. So I love to start these off, and like we we had said previously, perfect strangers. I, I know your name and. Uh, tiny little bits about you. So I love to start these off with an open-ended, very broad question of, just tell me about, tell me the story of your life. Well, I think I could start from the present and work backwards. How does that sound? Beautiful. Um, so presently I am a counselor in private practice. These are all my roles, of course. Um, and I'm a wife. I'm also a mother of young people. I say young people because it's like living in share accommodation in my house. Um, so I have like a 20, a 17 and a 16 year old at home. And then um, in my, as part of my work as a counsellor, I have uh, my private practice and I also have um, work that I do with other organisations. Um, one in particular is uh, Got Your Back Sister and we work supporting women coming out of domestic violence. So I'm a facilitator and counsellor there. Um, to kind of maybe, you know, being a counsellor is a big part of who I am um, and it's the type of job that when everyone says, oh, you want to have the job that you don't feel like is work, that's what my counselling work feels like to me. So um, I actually was thinking back to when I was a teenager and I was 15 and I was the kid that all the girlfriends and boyfriends would ring and say, oh, my boyfriend wants to break up with me or my girlfriend wants to break up with me. And I would be the friend who everyone would call and talk to about that. So, you know, I, I even at that young, young age had that, um, I don't know, maybe it's an ability to listen or reflect on you know there's so many aspects to it but but that's kind of I, I always cared as well and I like being um needed I guess in a way as well that's something that is a I, I guess the giving back of giving out in counseling yeah. um and supporting people is I like it, it needs a need in me too so yeah I love that I think that's so cool especially that you started learning at that young age that that you were in you know, that that you wanted to be there for people to to take uh, take on that with them at such a young age. I think that's really beautiful that it began then. Yeah, I, I was I was the person at school who was not really in um, best friends with anybody, but would kind of go around and high five everyone and then go and hide in the library. <laughs> that's amazing. That's kind of what I'm doing here at uni right now. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that's perfect. I love yeah. that. Oh, yeah, when I'm a uni student, I'm doing my um, psychology honours at the moment. So I ah. finished a bachelor's degree last year and I'm uh, doing my fourth year of study. So I'm halfway on the pathway to becoming a psychologist. That's amazing. So, I didn't realize yeah, when you said up a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine that takes quite a bit. I, I yeah, mean, I, yeah. Going back, I I never finished college, but um, I feel like if I went back now, I would be just severely overwhelmed. I think I just it would it would be a very oh god moment. <laughs> It does feel like that a lot, particularly in this fourth year. It's like nothing I've ever been through before. So um, it, it's, you know, challenges that arise and then prioritising things between me and my family and my work and probably in that order that um, it has to, it just for, it has to work for us all to be able to get along with each other. Otherwise, I don't want to lose my mind learning how to, <laughs> look after people losing their minds <laughs> right. seriously but I think it's a pretty good formula just come to uni and you'll find out <laughs> yeah no kidding um so I I was mentioning this beforehand but and we'll just talk briefly about it because it is something that's happening all over the world and some places are better than others tell me about what what's going on COVID wise in Australia so where I live in New South Wales is we are about two hours north of Sydney and uh, we, have not, we have had no restrictions other than um, practising social distancing for months now. Um, we had only a small number of cases, which were probably between March and uh, July last year. And... Even with, um, so universities closed, schools closed, every, everyone went quiet and stayed home. Uh, and then in the second half of the year, we sort of started to come out back into public arenas with everybody. And um, again, I think very tentatively, I, I, I had actually been in Japan in early March and, and have looked back to a year ago now and went, I can't believe we chose to go. Um, <laughs> right at that time because what were we thinking and people were saying to us you sure you're still going to go and we're like yeah of course like <laughs> it couldn't be that bad right and sure enough we come home and we were in isolation for a couple of weeks and everything changed everything changed very quickly um it changed a lot with my work as well my my client load went through the roof and um Lots of organisations were giving out additional funding and um, bringing counsellors on board to come and fulfil the need for their client base. Uh, so I got to do some really interesting stuff as well uh, that I wouldn't normally do. It's great. Yeah, I mean, with with a year going on <laughs> currently, what we're having, I, I can imagine a call for counsellors has been just massive i mean i work in the i've worked in the music industry and i know so many people that i've spoken to just in that realm and i know it's across the board it, this is something no one's ever dealt with and especially in the music industry losing that identity and all the mental health that comes with that has been immense yeah. this year yeah i think um it's interesting around me a lot of people who um, really do like a very quiet life and feel as if our culture really pushes them out of their comfort zone. I found them whispering to me, hey, I'm loving this. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> sure. I don't want to go back out. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, you know, all the naturally anxious people are suddenly going, oh, it's okay for me to stay home and starting to feel a lovely sense of calm and supportedness. <laughs> Totally. And I think even if you were the most extroverted person, this is, it's going to be very strange to come out of this, no matter what, if you had a level of, I don't give a shit about this, or I take this so seriously, I barely walked out my front door. There's some aspects of this that are going to be around for a long time, 
that that's true <laughs> that's just I, I mean like i mentioned no one will see this but behind you there were people just sitting with no masks and i mean for me i was just thinking oh my god and even when i watch movies or anything that were previous to this I, it's just like oh my god what are they doing <laughs> and then thinking about the sharing drinks or anything that we used to do where it was just passing shit around and it was like oh my god <laughs> well i'm noticing the opposite from the american culture on my TV shows, everybody's wearing a mask. Mm. And I'm thinking, wow, it's on TV, in acting. What? That's oh, just yeah. another level. Yeah, it is. I, I actually haven't watched many live TV shows. I have seen like commercials for shows that are doing that. But yeah, and it, it it's strange how much of a battle it has become and so how politicized it all has been over here of if you wear a mask, you're this. If you don't, you're this. And it's just like there's cultures that have been wearing these things for forever just out of courtesy for your fellow human that you're not giving them their whatever you're feeling. So Yeah, it's an extreme thing to think that, that a way of protecting ourselves and each other is being interpreted as a political stance or... Um, you know, words and phrases written on the front of masks as a, a new place to advertise, have a have a say without yeah. even opening your mouth, literally. Yeah, and I mean, the Grammys last night. I, I we I watched that last night here, and I mean, it was it was a fashion statement. Yeah, I mean, it was it was. I just don't understand that. <laughs> it was so funny. This is a say. medical issue. I, yeah, it, uh, yeah, it's. I was just that thankful that they were wearing them, but it was just, yeah, matching this. And I was like, all right, all right. <laughs> well, I suppose if you were on tour and living the, um, you know, in the entertainment business to the, to the degree you have been, you would be in it. It would be completely different. Yeah. It's, it's going to look, it's going to have to look so much different. I mean, I, yeah, I, I I've been talking to so many people and th the ideas that are just bouncing around. But I mean, we're we're around thousands of strangers and just all intermixed, and you never know where these people go or where they're coming from or what they've done and then how much they care about it. It's it's crazy to think about. <laughs> yeah, and Midnight Oil played last weekend out at one of our local wineries, wow. and a friend of mine went and I was like, oh, a concert, wow! But it was outdoors, so. Um, that's a, I mean, that's a little something less, but I still, it still felt concerning. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm thinking is as, as much as I'm, of course I want these things to return, but it's, it's also just cringy to think about. <laughs> I saw, okay. I saw a festival a happen. Come out. Oh, I, I saw a festival in Taiwan happened like a month ago or something like that. And it was full on and I was just like oh my god it's just terrifying <laughs> it's it's a whole new realm of uh, counselors and psychologists yeah to come in and help people readjust and I guess check back in with themselves and their own you know am I okay am I not okay and how do I care for myself really well through that so I can continue to I suppose live the kind of life that I want to live yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't even think about that aspect of it, but I mean, every podcast I listen to better health, the, all the online counselor, every they're sponsoring every big name podcast out there, which I think is fantastic. But yeah, I hadn't even really thought of it of like, yeah, there's so much need for that right now. Yeah. You're right. Crazy. Um, so I was looking, I was stalking your Instagram and tell me about the, I run for her. Oh, okay. So I run for her. It started out as um, it was a local running festival, which was due to run in the middle of the year last year. Um, and one of the board members from Got Your Back Sister, the charity that I work for, uh, was going to just participate in that her own self. Um, when it got cancelled because of COVID, 
she decided to still run and we, the organisation, created a um, do it within your own space and time and or do it where you are and run at the same time as um, as Belle Smith, who was running it. And, yeah, so I had a tiny little, because I live about 30 minutes out of Newcastle, so I had a tiny little group of friends and um, and we met uh, in our local, um, one of our local Swansea channel there and, and did our walk by the channel. And it was it was actually, there were a big group of people in Newcastle doing it and, and I had this tiny little group and one of the ladies in my group as we were walking along, she said, oh, I've got to, I have to be really mindful of, um, of PTSD while I'm walking this path. And I said, oh, really? Well, you know, what's, what's the going on? And she said, well, I lived here um, many years ago and this was the first place that I came in, um, domestic violence came across me, my path. And she said, and... And I, I had to leave. I had to run. And but this was the very first place that it confronted me in my relationship. And and she said, and I would walk this path during the day when I could, when I was at home um, with my little one in the pram, and I would walk this path. And I was blown away because you know I walk that path so often and sure. really take for granted the. It's not a trauma for me. Right. You know, and so I run for her. I, when I'm walking with her, I thought, wow, well, well, I'm running for you. Yeah. Uh, I'm running for uh, women in particular who are escaping domestic violence. Um, yeah, that's why we're doing it. We're doing it to support one another and, and to do it for when women can, cannot or, or are unable to make that choice for themselves. Yeah, that's amazing. It's such a common question that people ask around domestic violence, and that's, oh, why don't you just leave? Well, great. Why don't you just run away? That that's a that's a question, but it doesn't have. It sounds like it has a solution in it, but it's not just not that simple. Right. Just not. It's such a complex issue. Yeah. Yeah, I can't even imagine. <laughs> like, I know I. No. Any any time I hear about it, it's just like, well, why why would you go back? Why do you you know why why this why that? And like, it has to be yeah, it's it's a massively complex issue. It is, and I think part of the work that I get to do at Got Your Back Sister is um, in facilitating programs that first and foremost teach women to reconnect with who they are, whether they're in the relationship or not reconnect with who they are because that relationship disconnects them from who they are. Sure. And um, the other parts of the program are about rebuilding yourself because you've been deconstructed. Um, other programs that we do there are about being brave and courageous and, and then reflecting on yourself. What is it in me that brought me into this type of relationship and, and what do I need to learn about myself to avoid it in the future for myself and my children? And how do I change it for that generation? Because a lot of our ladies have seen it in their own homes. Sure. Uh, not everybody, but a certain number of ladies who have um, experienced violence in different degrees in their own families. And that's, that wasn't their dream. Right. It wasn't their dream. Yeah, and I love I love that there's such an empowerment part to that, of of finding that that inner work for yourself and and finding that love for yourself and then finding that power in yourself because that's so important in all of these kinds of situations. It, it's it is everything when we come back to ourselves and maybe we don't learn initially how to check in. Am right. I okay? Um, there's something interesting about working with women in domestic violence that has, for me, I, I part of one of the programs is teaching red flags. So, you know, the assumption about red flags is that they're obvious and that they are clear signs. Um, I don't necessarily agree based on the stories anecdotally that I've heard from ladies, and that is because 
um, the subtlety is where it begins. It's the slight of um, uh, a statement or something that's said that's demeaning but not given attention. Or it's, there was a lady who I was talking to, um, she'd been in a relationship with uh, her partner for 22 years and I said to her, so when did you first know? And she said, well, I probably could have seen it if I looked back to when we were dating, we had an argument and he said to me, get out of the car, get out of the car now. And she said, but we're, we're like kilometres from anywhere. And he said, I don't care, get out of the car. And she took a moment to reflect 22 years back and go, wow, I felt something in that moment that I ignored. And so go the rest of the moments, building layer upon layer in in a story that unfolds. I mean, 22 years. Yeah, that's a... Come on. That's people's lifetime so far. It is. Yeah, and that's raising children and families in that time too. Sure. You know, yeah. It, it, so I think that the red flags are probably a little tinier and a little more uh, a different colour. They're not red. There's yeah. something a little less, um, I suppose, obvious about them. But the feeling when we notice anything that causes friction or conflict in us, is that's where the juice is. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, that's exactly. the time to pause and to go, oh, wow, I feel that. What's that? Where is it? What would I like to do about it? Sure. Yeah. 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 I just, it just breaks my heart to think of, of especially that, that story you just told 22 years and then to think, think back and pinpoint that at the beginning of something where yeah. I imagine too, it's not always that cut and dry either of, oh, I didn't see that one spot, but to realize it being, I mean, it could have been 25 years and they dated for three years, then got married or been partners. Yeah, that is, that is really unbelievably beautiful work that you do. I think that's speaks a lot about you and who you are to, to be in that with, you know, with counseling alone is, is such beautiful work, but then to take on domestic violence is unbelievable. Wow. Uh, I, I think I, you know, that role being there started out as a volunteer position and then all the stars aligned on the right day at the right moment for me to be in that role. And that in itself is enough of a sign for me. Yeah. There's no friction in that decision. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's how I know that it, I'm in the right place is that it comes easily and, and effortlessly almost. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Um, mm-hmm. So when I spoke with Zenya, she told me about a book you two are working on that kind of goes along with that, right? Well, this has got a bit of a swear word in the title. That's okay. <laughs> yes, it does. It comes back to that. <laughs> I say it all the time. If you don't want to yeah, say it, I'll, no, I'll go in the word. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big swear bear. And, um, yeah, so what the fuck is self-love anyway, right? Which yeah. we were having a conversation one day and I said that to her or she said it to me and we both laughed and I said, oh, that's it. That's what the book's called. That's what the fuck is self-love anyway? because it's such a term that is thrown around. And when we sat down to really look at it, we just could not stop thinking of all the different ways that we can show ourselves kindness and compassion and that's all the, the, the ingredients of love, you know, wholehearted living, to quote, you know, a Brené Brown model, but, you know, that type of um, that type of self love, it's not superficial. It is it is a hand on the heart, and it is a pause. Um, I give out pause stickers, in pause button stickers <laughs> in my counselling practice, and and I had one on my steering wheel in my car because I was a little bit of a road rager, uh, <laughs> and I put it on the horn 
to remind me, maybe you should pause before you smash that horn. Yeah. And just just put a hand on your heart instead and just go, it's okay. Are you all right? <laughs> where are we at right now? And as a measure of self-love, I think that's really where it starts. Yeah. Yeah, when she told me that title, I was just like, that is so good. And I love <laughs> just the directness of it. It's like, what the fuck is self-love? Because it, it is. <laughs> There's so many different overarching themes or directions or there's so much to it you know that that you can follow or go off on any kind of tangent with it but to truly find it it is it is what your self-love is yes it's what, yourself. what it means to you that's right and if you're happy to live a life with friction or drama or you know, that just might be your normal but do you feel loved in all of that does it enable you to be loving to others because that's what self-love does self-love gives you a full tank so you can you know put a cup full there a yeah. bucket load there <laughs> a few little droplets over there you know that's what self-love does it enables you to do so much more yeah i love i love that where it's like a little bit here here i love that i think that's so good <laughs> A bit, bit here and a bit, bit there. Yeah. Here, a bit, a bit everywhere, a bit, bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's me man. and old McDonald's farm and old bucket of love. <laughs> yeah, old buckets of love. I think, I think we, you know, I always, I, I, I like to use the word ripple effect and that kind of goes to it of like with the water theme of like, here, get a little drip here, a little drip there. And for me, I just think, so, you know, sometimes you with self-love or with with trying to put out this kindness it's it's tough because it's like where are we making where are we making the differences but i love that analogy of like okay so you and i have this conversation and it like a, a drip goes to wherever it may be whoever hears this and then it's like oh wow that's a really good thought and then it's like that drip goes boom and then they spread around and then those ripples and like you know it's it's really cool to see how how it can move around once you start putting that self-love in and once you do that work for you and then you can start maneuvering it to other people yeah because you don't want to be giving from an empty cup right there's not this this you know there's sediment down the bottom it's a bit trashy it's a bit <laughs> yeah. lucky down yeah. there and it's a combination of all things left over so we, we don't want to be giving out of that out of that empty well um, yeah. Yeah. and we don't need to fill our well with stuff you know it's not the stuff that fills us it, it's about connection and yeah the thing I love most about what you just said with the ripple effect is that all those ripples or those dots are connected they go from one person to the next to the next to the next just far and wide oh let's do more of that yeah yeah, let's have a lot more of that. Because the more yeah. the more ripples and, and drops that I put out, the more people I touch. And if you start doing that, then that happens. And then it, however many people hear this and they start doing it, you know, it's like it can spread, you know. So I always have to come back to that for myself where if I think I'm not doing enough or that, that comparison game that always can bring us down of, oh, well, that person's doing more. But it's like, okay. I'm doing this and it is going to the, this amount of people and then it goes and it goes. And then I start to think about it and I go, you know what? That's beautiful. Cause I yeah. don't know where my ripples go. And that's really cool in and of itself is not knowing where it goes, but like having that love to put out and then letting it just go. Yeah. I, I, the analogy I love for that is the selfie drone. So if you take a selfie, it's like a little check-in with yourself. If you send your drone out, then you go out and have a look at the big picture and you're like, oh, wow, but I'm only doing this small thing here. But that's okay because it can make it all the way out there. So we can take a little selfie, check in with ourselves, have a look at the lay of the land and then come back to self hmm. and then do it, keep doing that, you know. It just keeps to keep perspective. Yeah. I like Sometimes seeing the wideness and the the wonder and the oh, bigness of it all really helps to remind us that oh okay my work might be small 
but it's okay. It has its own, it's doing its thing. Yeah. And I don't have to look after it, but I can observe it. Yeah. I mean, case in point, the fact that I'm speaking with you and you're in Australia and I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, and you, in one of your emails, you said that you listened to my podcast and that's amazing for me to say someone out there in Australia until 40 minutes ago, who was a perfect stranger to me, my words made it to literally halfway around the world. That's pretty amazing. Is that cool or what? That's because so cool. I thought the same thing about being a podcast guest. I was like, wow, I get to go to America right. in COVID. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. like travel, just different, just not yeah. as we know it. <laughs> right, exactly. Our words are traveling, but well, our bodies cannot, which I, I'm okay with, you know? Yeah, yeah. That feeds very much into that, um, you know, the energy behind it all, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, because it's just energy. Our yeah. words are just energy and uh, vibration in the universe. Yeah. So I guess being in the music biz, vibration is like part of your gig. Yes. Oh, yeah. Constant. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it definitely is. Um, but on the travel note, um, I always love to ask, and because you were talking about going to Japan in a very – uh, I, don't know, I was going to say controversial time. I guess it could be that. Um, so I guess to start it off, where, where's your favorite place you've traveled to? So we can, we can daydream a little bit since we're not able to. Are you guys in winter right now? No, we're, in, we are in spring about to be summer. Okay. So you're going to have to take yourself to tropical island paradise in Tonga. Okay. Yeah, that has been one of the best travel experiences. Uh, so husband and I took our three teenager kids at the time and uh, we went to Tonga and we swam with humpback whales. What? Yes. <laughs> For real. That's amazing. I know. How I big know. are they? Like buses. Oh They're God. massive. And that before when I said, you know, that comparison of I'm really small, that was actually the image that I had in my head because I remember feeling in that moment and we went, um, we were close enough to see them and take photos. We were, there's a certain distance, um, like the safety protocols in place for us as well as for the whales. So sure. that's, let's take everyone's concerns off the table. Um <laughs> But so we went within touching distance, but there was something quite phenomenal about being in the presence of something so amazing and so out of what you would consider normal. And then for that big mama whale's little baby to be swimming around and the mum went down and the baby calf just laid and played all over mum and suckled and then came back up through the air and I was in the water with my middle child and we both had snorkels and goggles on and all I could hear was her going (laughs) (laughs) we looked at each other and both crying into our goggles just as the wonder of um what we were watching so yeah, we've got photos around it, like big pictures around oh our my house. God, experience because it's mean, the experience that was amazing. It, the place it was beautiful, but the experience. Oof. Yeah, I mean, I have a fear of the ocean because of the vastness of it. I think it is fascinating i love the creatures in there but it's also what terrifies me of it is the creatures in there and then their abilities to be there and mine are not yeah it's <laughs> um, a massive unknown yeah and like i i was working on a cruise ship uh with a, mu- a music cruise and it like definitely challenged my fear of being in the ocean in the middle of the night and it was just like so vast and dark and it was just like oh my God, it's so peaceful, but so magical and so terrifying. So I can't even imagine being in the ocean and then having these 
unbelievably beautiful <laughs> buses floating by you, swimming by you. Looking at you, you know, there was one moment that I got to have where I was having a bit of a panic because I wasn't keeping up with my family and I'm not like a super strong swimmer, but we had, a you know, floating things with us and um, fins and goggles and, and snorkels. And I started to get a little bit panicky. And then I looked down and on the white sandy bottom was a whale just resting. And I was over the top of it and I thought, I looked down, I could see the little bubbles just coming up off the skin of the whale. And I just laid and went very still as I looked down and just thought, wow. And that calmed my breathing and it calmed me. And I was like, oh, I'm covered in whale bubbles <laughs> or whale farts, like one of my kids said. <laughs> <laughs> That's wow, amazing. That just a fart. Um, but that, those little, those, yeah, those small moments, but there's such an incredible um oh, just a reminder of I'm, I'm tiny right yeah i'm just tiny a, and it's okay yeah just a little blip <laughs> yeah just keep doing your tiny little thing and it's okay yeah yeah, yeah. that's a, oh my god that's magical um <laughs> damn now I'm so just, lucky. yeah that's incredible i I can't even imagine i swam over a lemon shark this year in St. Croix and I my partner was swimming beside me and I was pretty terrified but she just grabbed my hand and I kind of did the same thing I just did a who and I did okay and then we got back we got back to the boat and the guy was like oh they're like puppies and I'm like okay I'm not I'm not the guy that lives here and takes people out on <laughs> snorkeling trips all the time so when I see any shark I don't I don't envision puppies. It's not not where not my wheelhouse of of thoughts that I have going on. <laughs> puppies that start with sh and end in arc. No, yeah. that's not puppy. That's no puppy. puppy. Oh God. Um, I think that same that same heart, like the heart grab that it gives you, and then somebody just reaches out and touches you and holds your hand. Oh, that's that's something. That's something special too. Yeah, I was actually I was very glad i knew she was there because also that could have like freaked me out if she just grabbed me and i was like yeah fuck <laughs> 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 that could have been <laughs> also terrifying oh god <laughs> oh god um i think in australia shark rhymes with fuck yeah I, yeah I I, fuck. I I think i'm hip i'm i think i'm hip with that lingo too when i see one i i remember i went surfing one time in california ages ago and I saw fins and I love dolphins, but I wasn't thinking dolphins at that moment, which I should have been and ended up being a really beautiful moment. But I just saw fins and I was like, oh, dear God, get me out of here. My buddy's like, no, 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 just be chill. And I'm like, hey, dude, I can't be chill if there's a bunch of sharks swimming around me. And he's like, no, no, it's dolphins. And I was like, then I saw the little round tip and I was like, OK, good. But yeah. it was it was I'll a moment. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, all right. So on this, this note, I love to ask this to everybody and, you know, COVID travel restrictions aside, uh, if you could go anywhere or if I had a plane ticket and I said, here it is, where are you headed to? Yeah. I'm heading straight back to Japan. Yeah. Especially right now. Cause the snow is awesome and I've got some unfinished snowboarding business to do. <laughs> That's amazing. We had to cut our trip short. Uh, we had three weeks and we, we had two weeks on the snow and then we went to go touring around Tokyo and um, down to Kyoto and back, but we didn't get to do the touring part. So that that's exactly what I've been saying to my family. Yeah. As soon as we can go, let's, we're going <laughs> back to Japan. Yeah, I'm, I'm just fascinated with Japan in general. I haven't been yet, but um, my partner's family just moved over there. Um, her aunt and uncle and her two cousins, and they're there, and they send videos all the time. And they live in a village like 45 minutes outside of Tokyo, but it's just like, it's fast. The, the culture just fascinates me. I'm just, 
everything these kids are doing, going to school and how they go together. And it's, it's really beautiful. And there's so much rich culture and old culture. Yeah. In the Japanese um, tradition. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm fascinated by cultures in general. That's one thing with this whole year that I've missed the most is just actually being able to go and see other places and travel. I just miss traveling so much. Do you get to answer the same question? Where are you going? If I give you a ticket? Oh, I can. Yeah. Where are you going? Um, It's funny as I've done this podcast, it has definitely adapted and changed. And I think when I started, I would have said Morocco, oh. which is still high up there. But um, as I have spoken to people, um, I've gotten a real heart for Africa. I would really want to go. Um, I had a I had a friend on who works with this company called Ajiri Tea, and she was telling me about this this little village she goes to called Kisi. And I was just like, oh I heard God. that episode. Yeah. Oh, I thought the same thing. Yeah. And I was like, and then when she just was like, you would love it. And I was like, oh my God, I, I definitely would. And then my friend Stuart I had on, he's from Zimbabwe. And just like everyone I meet from there, it's just, it's just like, it's stolen my heart. So I think, I think that would be my, I, I would go there and I would just kind of, I would want to meet my friends there and then just kind of like not I mean a safari sure would be cool but like I would love to just go and get in and meet people and yeah I think that would be I think that's top of my list right now. Yeah, cool. Cuz I've been cool. very I've been very fortunate to with my work when I'm off I can just like I go travel mm-hmm. and get done with a tour or whatever and I'd just be like fuck it I'm gone I'm going to go and I, I, I've been single up until 2019. So I was just like, I don't have anyone to answer to. I'm just going to go. I don't care. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, so I anything that I had wanted to see, I would just go. I just, it was, okay, I want to see it. Let's do it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's, I think that's on my top of my list right now. Cool. Yeah. My husband and I, when we first got married, we spent two years living in Papua New Guinea. Oh, and no um, yeah, we we went. Well, I think we had our second wedding anniversary up there, so we'd known each other for a total of two and a half years. <laughs> and we had our our seven month old baby with us, and um, and did the same jobs that we do here in Australia, but we, we were doing them in a volunteer capacity. But yeah, it it afforded it afforded us this amazing cultural experience that we still talk about, listen to me, I'm still talking about it now. We've been home for 17 years and it affected us profoundly, absolutely profoundly because, you know, it was one of those moments in life where you choose, oh, I can stay here, pay the mortgage, raise the baby, uh, or we could come go away for a little bit and come back. It'll still be there. Yeah. So why don't we just do the going away bit and then see what happens? And yeah, I think it's one of those things that's really affected. It's had a huge ripple effect to come back to that uh, on our on our lives and how we do family. Yeah. Well, I just love it too that you were sitting there on that crossroads, which I think a lot of people hit. Of, okay, we have this safe space. We have we have this. We have our careers. We have our house. We can pay for life, or do we just go have life? And I love that you chose to have life. Because like you said, you can always go back. You can always, you know, it's going to be there. Yeah, that's right. And we we went with an organisation who supported us in going. So we didn't do it um, without wisdom or without consideration. I mean, we had a baby with us. So we we chose um, also to go to a place that was safe with a baby. So there was a hospital near us and... Um, which we did need to go to a couple of times. So, you know, medical emergencies happen, and, and, but we were in a good place. So it was like a safe adventure, if you want to say it like that. Sure. But, I mean, it's still, it's still an uncomfortable choice, I would say, of, of, you know, the comfortability of life. Most people are going to choose the comfortability 
and you yeah. you chose to go to a different place which i think is amazing and i have a friend of mine who i'm still in a group chat with every day that um i forget what years he was there but he pretty sure spent a good part of his growing up life in papua new guinea his parents were um missionaries over there yeah. And so he went from Papua New Guinea and he came back to small town Ohio. <laughs> well, that really could be a difference. Yeah. You probably have to wear clothes in winter. Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> that was what, that's what we found the hardest thing with our son because he was about three when we got home and, you know, he'd never worn pants really. <laughs> <laughs> so he would dress up when the top half of him was all winter and he'd still just he'd put a pair of, you know, gumboots on to get around the backyard and bare legs. Just hated wearing clothes because in the tropical heat, that was, it was not yeah. his familiar. Oh, my God, that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> I know. He's the whitest, fairest skinned, bluest eyes, blondest haired boy ever. He was such a star up there. I love that. I don't know. I think I, I just think that's so cool. I it's it's the kind of attitude I love to put into a ripple effect of so many people I talk to that have taken these these leaps and just like gotten away from their comfort zone for a second, and even if it's for a little bit. You know, it's like a um, little bit into my story of you know when I was right before I had to get sober, I got really sick. My liver was starting to fail, and you know it was that life or death moment literally and it was like i heard the doctor say you might not make it through the night and i'll tell you what i wasn't thinking about the safe decisions the the the, the shit that i didn't do i was thinking through my life and i was going okay i lived my life i did it i did it the way i wanted to do it and it might not have been the best monetarily it might not have been the best for whatever else but I took that chance. I, I I lived a life that when I was presented with that, I was like, I'm, I'm pretty good. So I always love to encourage that, that take a, take a step, go for it. Like if it's money versus adventure, take adventure because money, yeah. I mean, we live in a greedy world. There's money yeah. to be made, you know? That's true. I've got a 16 year old, my youngest, She's at a crossroads right now and it looks like the choice, it's so funny because from, you know, more mature eyes, you can see what this crossroads looks like. But to her, it looks like do I, because <laughs> she's saved, she's worked hard, saved a lot of money. She's, do I buy myself an Audi or do I buy myself a van and travel? And I'm like, honey, you know what's going to make you happy. Yeah. And she said, well, you know, I could just go and pick apples. I go, yeah, you yeah. could pick apples. Right. You could just do that. You could, and, and if that's what you want to do, then just do that. Yeah. Because this stuff is going to be here. Right. As far as I know, no one's like knocking houses down so you can't live in them anymore. Right. They're gonna, there'll, there'll be four walls here somewhere. And if, if not, and you bought a van and then they start knocking down the walls, he can live in your van. Always live in the van. <laughs> I van mean, I'll, I'll talk straight to her. My partner and I, we bought a van this summer and we drove around for months and it was amazing. We're planning our next trip when, you know, when it becomes safer for us. And my husband and I have a, an old van from, like, when, from our business um, that we've kept, decked it out with a bed in the back. We've got solar panels on the roof and we that's on the weekend we chuck surfboards in, dogs, oh, um, travel with coffee cups and that, that's our, our little hashtag van life sticker on the Yes, back. I love it. Um, but, yeah, I, I drive a fancy car during the week and it's all van on the weekends. So it seems Perfect. to strike a nice balance for me. Totally. That's brilliant. I love that. Yeah. And we love, we actually love that time, just just being away and um, we spend a, a lot of time, <clears throat> excuse me, going from coastal spot to coastal spot to coastal spot, just hanging out and being with each other and hanging out with each other, which when life can get extraordinarily busy is the very thing that we want the most. Yeah. 
and that's a it's such a beautiful way to do it just hopping in a van and hanging out and yeah hopping the coast oh my god makes me want to go drive this thing off right now (laughs) (laughs) it's late at night you be careful (laughs) yeah no i i won't i won't go anywhere tonight but it just it, might it, make it, it to the coast. Bye. <laughs> yeah, it, it'd be quite a quite a haul to get to the coast from here, uh, but it definitely fuels my my uh, planning in my mind of of what to do this summer. Yeah. Um, all right, I have two more questions for you, and since you listen to the podcast, I'm sure you know what they are, but I'm gonna do them anyway. And the first one is, what would you want the world to know about you? Mm. <laughs> oh that's a, that's actually harder than it sounds yeah. I think that people will just make up their mind themselves <laughs> uh, I think there's two thoughts running through my mind one is about I, I try and live with my whole heart as much as I can and so when I make, I, I'm a little feisty, right? So I'm short and I'm, I'm that like feisty fairy my daughter calls me. So, you know, I'm, I'm small, but you don't want to get in my way because I'll punch you. But I'm not a violent person. Right. <laughs> I've, never, I've, I've, I've really only punched one person. That was my brother and that was warranted because it was a teenager and, sure. you know. Brothers just deserve to, to be punched. Just trying to put dessert on my face. So that was the only time I've actually <laughs> um, done that. But the wholehearted thing, um, so I'm surrounded by hearts. I love, I love hearts. I have I've got a heart necklace on me where I that I always wear. Um uh, it, on my desk, I have um ceramic hearts, I have glass hearts like blown I, I I just cannot get enough I, I, I've got stuffed hearts hanging on a string <laughs> I mean and and a, a big part of that is always coming back to that place in me that is feels like my center which is my heart space my heart often tells me what the answer is if I'm listening yeah so and when I'm with clients or when I'm uh, even just with my teenagers when they're going through tough stuff, sometimes just taking that moment just to be and to sit and to almost um, be in that heart space with them and not necessarily fix it or write it or change them or give them suggestions because I'm very good with suggestions. But to be able to quietly just sit in that heart space with them means so much to be able to do that. So that's something I would like people to know. I've got T-shirts with hearts and love written all over <laughs> them. I'm not even kidding. It's, it, I kind of surround myself with it, I guess, in a way. That is my way of telling people who I am. Yeah. 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 So there, I, there you go. I love that. And, I mean, every... I was thinking of uh, just of our whole conversation as you were talking about that. And I was like, yeah, every aspect of our conversation has been around love and hearts and your weekends in the van checking in and your, you know, all, all everything you're doing for domestic violence and all that, everything is checking in with hearts and making sure, yeah. which I think is so beautiful. Heartfelt. Heartfelt. Yeah. Definitely. I have a dear friend who's 74 and climbed Kilimanjaro in her 60s, like Holy in her shit. late 60s. Yeah, I know. And she's she's so good, but when we hug, we hug heart to heart, left shoulder to left shoulder. Oh, uh, well, I love that. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. And instead of um, uh, like touching elbows, like to sh- instead of the shake hands, we touch hearts. Uh, I don't touch hers. We touch. We we just touch our own hearts in a sign of recognition for one another. Yeah. So let's make that go viral, world. Yes. Yeah. I love that. That's I love so that good. too. So yeah. good. Especially in a time when I don't want to touch people at this moment, I can just do. Yeah. yeah that's fantastic. Also, yeah. 
as you said that, I was thinking any time that I'm unmotivated, I hear a story like that, or I think I've done so much, and then I'm like, I haven't climbed Kilimanjaro, and I'm Me in my either. 30s, <laughs> let alone in my late 60s. Come on. That's amazing. I, I, I love that. I think constant inspiration no matter no matter what I, I always anytime I talk to somebody I just find some of that where I'm like okay I haven't done enough I've, I've, I have I can so always do more stuff do. I know you know I, I think I've been to a lot of places and I hear about you where you went and so you're whales and I'm like see why do I ever I, I don't I can't stop I haven't seen that I have to go do that <laughs> I, know, I know I know I feel that about life I I I feel that like if I was to get a diagnosis of some sort of terminal illness tomorrow, I'd be so damn cranky because I'm just not ready. Yeah. I'm just not ready. I've got so much more to do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was that same night I was talking about. It was one of those where I literally told the doctor when I was about to go into the hospital room, I said, if you know hundred percent that I close my eyes and I'm done, like whatever it has to be, if it has to be a movie scene where I'm running down the hallway with my ass hanging out of this this gown you've put me in and it's kicking the door open and I run into downtown Cleveland and I hail a cab and I'm off to the airport, whatever it has to be, I'm not coming in here if I'm dead. I'm going to Norway and I'm going to wear one of those those squirrel-like wingsuits and I'm just going to jump off a mountain over a fjord and I'm going to fly my ass to whatever happens and that that's the way it's going to happen. I'm not... What a moment. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm not doing this here. It's not my time. Like, if, if it is my time, then that's going to be what I'm doing or I'm going to try my damnedest to get there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, can I have one quick funny story? Absolutely. Absolutely. When I was in Papua New Guinea, I had an ectopic pregnancy and I almost died. And I was in, um, <laughs> we worked for a Catholic university and so there were a lot of priests who worked there. Mm. And um, I'm really like, I've got nearly no blood pressure. They're just about to put me into emergency surgery. And the priest from the university that we worked at walked in the door, I said, it's too soon. It's too soon. I am not ready yet. Get out. And the, the doctor's like, I think she's she's going to be okay. <laughs> Get out. It's not your time yet. I am not ready for you to be <laughs> This is not a last rights moment. Get out. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it is. I mean, yeah, it's 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 strange to think of in that moment and like, beyond the sadness that I thought I was going to, or that I know I would have put on to people that cared about me had I passed. It was that moment where I was like, okay, I'm, I'm good at good where I've, what I've seen, but oh, there's so much more. There's always so much more. And that's what keeps motivating me. I, I hear people be like, well, I'll never see everything. I'm like, well, you know what? I'm going to try my best. I will never say I won't. That. Until I don't, then I probably won't say anything. <laughs> I know. And I'm halfway there. I'm turning 49 in a few weeks. So, yeah, I'm like, okay, I'm halfway. Let's yeah. keep going. Let's kick, yeah, let's kick it in. I mean, we took That's a year off time. too. We were all rested. We're ready to roll. Yeah, you'll be ready to roll when it all gets going back <laughs> <Yes>. in. <laughs> well, happy early birthday as well. Oh, thank you. I You're love welcome. my birthday. What date is your birthday? My birthday is the 12th of April and yeah, I love my birthday. I always love being celebrated and I love yeah. celebrating it. Yeah. Mine was Saturday actually. Oh, true. Well, happy birthday for Saturday. Thanks. You're almost one month behind me or yeah, one month behind me. Mine's yes. the 13th. But I bet you're not turning 49. <laughs> no, 36. Just a baby. Just a little baby. Yep. Yeah. So you've got so much more to go. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I'll get there. I'll yeah, get to everywhere will. I get to. Yeah. All right. Time. Last question. If you had the ear of everybody in the world, what would you say to them? Listen to yourself. Listen to your heart. Listen to your breath. 
Check in. Pause a little. Listen, listen when it's your person says go and stop. Pay attention. And actually, a really good coach that I once worked with, she put it in two words. Notice that. She I said, like just it. notice that. And as the moment arises, notice that. Hmm. Yeah. Like so that. maybe that's it. Just notice that. Yeah, because the second I heard it, I stopped and I didn't think of anything. I just went. And that's, yeah, I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. man, that's good. That's her ripple. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then that yeah, puts that rippling. little pause. Man, whew, causing all those ripples. That's I know. So that's fantastic. Well, it has been so amazing to chat with you. I've been looking forward to this and it's been so fun. What a pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah, and thank you for, for taking the time to, to come on and hang with me. You are very, very welcome. And I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. It's, you're, you're a day ahead of me yeah. already. Yeah, that's right. It is <laughs> the afternoon here, and uh, I have got an exam to do, and then I will be off home to cook dinner because that's how life rolls to me these days. All right. Well, best of luck with your exam and... <laughs> Thanks. And your dinner. <laughs> Keep on sharing this goodness. Keep I, on sharing the goodness. I promise you I will. And thank yeah, you for being a part that. of that goodness. And for listening and letting my spreading my ripple around a little bit. It's a wonderful world. It is a wonderful world. It really can be. Yeah. It's so cool. It's so cool. As I as I started like traveling and stuff, I, I understand the capabilities of it. But you know, like it, it it's cool. It's one of my favorite parts is seeing the analytics of where listeners are in the world. And it's so cool when new places pop up. It's like, oh, I made it there. You know, it's so fun. So yeah, it is fun. Yeah, it, it's just one of the. It's it's more of an honor of that that something that I'm helping create in these beautiful conversations I get to have with all these amazing people is spreading around. That's exactly how it feels. It feels like an honor. Thank yeah. you for the honor. Thank you for the honor as well. All right. Have All a beautiful right. rest of your day. Cheers. Thanks, friend. Bye. Bye, Nick. Thank you for listening to the Beautifully Human podcast. To hear more beautiful stories from beautiful humans, follow us on Spotify and rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Follow us on Instagram at the Beautifully Human Podcast. Peace signs up. <laughs>